Can you pour me some milk? Sure. Thank you. Ah, yummy. Hello, I'm your host, Ricky Saias. We have Firefighters, Winterfest, and a new place for toddlers at your neighborhood library. This and more on this edition of Your City in Five. Thank you. Cheers. Yay! There's a new fire station responding to emergencies on the west side. City leaders, firefighters, and hospital officials opened Fire Station 36 that serves the neighborhood around Wrestler and Trans Mountain. The state-of-the-art facility has several features that help firefighters while improving emergency response times. I'm super proud uh, to, to be a part of this and, and it wouldn't be possible without that collaboration with the Hospitals of Providence and also the 2019 uh, Public Safety Bond and uh, it really reflects the commitment to public safety that the community has uh, and it shows that you know uh, when we put great people together, great things can be accomplished. The facility is located on the Providence Hospital Trans Mountain campus. It's easy to find because it has a stunning public art piece outside that pays tribute to firefighters. This is the first firehouse built from the voter approved 2019 public safety bond. Speaking of new, the fire department has a new logo, patch and uniforms. It features the iconic star on the mountain, a different color scheme and the Texas flag. Here's firefighter Luke Liecti proudly sporting that new uniform. Now the change isn't for fashion's sake, it's more modern, professional, and a functioning work uniform. It seems very breathable actually. I really like, I like the, I don't know, it seems a little bit more sporty than the old uniforms. They were all cotton, um, and I think these are like a polyester mix. So they, they seem a lot more breathable. Firefighters are already wearing that uniform. Now as for the logo and patch, they're slowly being added to department vehicles. The city of El Paso gained more recognition for its efforts in working with our military community. Earlier this year, the Sun City was named a Great American Defense Community. During a conference in Orlando, Florida, city leaders officially received the award that celebrates communities with exceptional commitment to improving service members, veterans, and military families. More on this award, including what it means to our community and for Bliss, will be showcased on the next edition of Sun City Bliss with Soraya Ayu Palacios. Okay, give me some milk then. We got some dessert. Here, put that on my plate here. Oh, I'm All right. Give that to him. Check this out, guys. I'm here with a few toddlers at the Richard Burgess Library. There is now a new space for them to interact yeah. and make friends. The Richard Burgess Library branch in the Northeast has a new space designed for toddlers. The public libraries unveiled a new section called Family Place. The area allows toddlers to explore, learn, interact, and improve their social skills with other children before starting school. This is uh, something that we were really hoping for. We, ha we have one at the Doris Van Doren, which is one of our regional libraries. Richard Burgess is our second regional library here in the Northeast, so we really want to put them in all the regional libraries because they're a little bit bigger and they have the space to accommodate. The Texas State Library and Archives Commission provided the funds to build it. Visit ElPasoLibraries.org to learn more on the free programs offered by the El Paso Public Libraries. And it's official, Winterfest is coming back downtown. The city council showed their support of the coolest fest in the Southwest with a city proclamation. This year, the Sherlegate Law Firm is the title sponsor for the season that starts Saturday, November 18th and runs through January 1st. Jim and I were very excited to have the opportunity to collaborate with the city on this one, this super great event where all the community comes together. And this is an opportunity to be together and celebrate life and celebrate families. And the next edition of Your City in Five will focus on all things Winterfest, including the lights parade, opening ceremonies, new attractions, and what the season is all about. You've heard of daylight savings time, but have you heard of stray light savings? Well, it's the time of the year when you check your pet's microchip to make sure that it's up to date. Like changing smoke detector batteries, El Paso Animal Services encourages pet owners to get their pets microchipped at free microchipping events this month. Just bring pets on a leash or in a carrier. Now they must be more than six weeks of age or weigh at least two pounds. And that's it. Click on the calendar tab at ElPasoAnimalServices.org to see where they'll be going this month. And if your pets are microchipped but you don't know where they are registered, you can find out at PetMicrochipLookup.com. All you need is your pet's microchip number, which you can find by getting them scanned at any El Paso fire station or vet clinic. If your pet isn't registered, you can do so for free at My24Pet.com. 
Animal Services is offering free pet adoptions for veterans, active military, first responders, and their families in honor of Veterans Day. Pets and Vets happens Saturday, November 11th at the city's animal shelters. Now, the event not only celebrates the service of our nation's heroes, but also highlights the benefits of pet companionship. You can view adoptable pets by visiting ElPasoAnimalServices.org. All that's needed to adopt is a valid photo ID and to be older than 18 years of age. Our time is up on this edition of Your City in 5 from the Richard Burgess Library in Northeast El Paso. If you have a chance, come on over and check out this branch library. For Jose Solis, who's behind the camera, I'm Ricky Saias. Stay safe and please be good to each other. We'll see you next time on Your City in 5.